Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, coming once again to you not quite live from One Take Studios, where today's topic is variables and expressions. Variables and expressions. Words have meanings, and it's important to know what the meanings of those words are. So we're going to start with variable. If you look at variable, the root word is very. Think about places where you've heard the word very used, like times may vary. What does that mean? Times may change. The word vary means change. And so a variable refers to something that can change. Specifically, it can change values in mathematics. It might be a letter, anything out of the alphabet, or anything out of the Greek alphabet for that matter. It could be a symbol. Honestly, if you liked drawing tiny bunny rabbits, you could use a tiny bunny rabbit for your variables if you wanted to. But it's going to be something that indicates I'm holding a spot open for a number that I'm not really sure what that number is yet, and so its value might change, and I want to make sure that I have a place for that number to go. I'd like to take a minute and think of some examples of variables that you have seen. The one that's probably the most frequent is x. x is a variable find x or comma n n is another common variable often representing a number so n number um, other ones that are very frequent you might see y you could see honestly any letter of the alphabet sometimes we use a sometimes we use b mm, if you want to get fancy ooh, there's one for you that's beta in the Greek alphabet. Or let's say that you're feeling festive and it's Christmas time and you need a variable. There. Ta da! There's my Christmas tree variable. <laughs> it honestly can be anything that you would like. All right, and so it's going to be oftentimes a letter that we're used to seeing. Sometimes it's a letter we're not used to seeing it. It could be any shape or symbol as well. So these could stand for a number. X might stand for four, but maybe X stands for five. We don't know. It can vary. It can change its value. Next up, we are talking about constants. And if we think about the meaning of the word constant, we often refer to our God as being a constant God, a God who does not change. And so same thing in math, a constant is something that doesn't change. The value is going to stay the same. Hmm. Well, if I have something that has a value of five, what is it? It's a five. It's an actual number. So if I have a number, just plain old number, no letters of the alphabet, nothing else like that, that's going to be a constant. So maybe, like I said, I use 5 as a constant. Maybe I use 12 as a constant, because 12 always means 12. Its value does not change. Maybe I use 4,362 as a constant, because that could be as well. But any single number can be a constant, because our numbers do not have values that change. All right, so we've got variables, we've got constants. Um, let's do this. Let's make a bullet point next to this so that it stands out, so we know that's the first point on the page. And let's do a bullet point next to this one so it stands out. So that's my second item on the page. So we've talked about variables, and we have examples. And we've talked about constants, and we have examples. So the third thing up are going to be our expressions. Here's our third thing for the day. So we'll put another bullet point right there. Expression. This is not a facial expression, like a smile. Sadly, I do miss seeing your smiles with all the masks. This expression is a combination of variables and constants. So we're saying it could be a single one variable or one constant. So for example, five by itself would be considered an expression. A by itself would be considered an expression. So I could have one or more variables or constants, and if I've got more than one, they are joined together by addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, all of our favorite operations. And one thing that I like to point out is that an expression does not have an equal sign in it. Not have an equal sign in it. There's another E word that does have equal signs. That's going to be an equation. If you'd like to jot that down, you can. We will talk about that again some other time.
but an expression does not have an equal sign. It's just a collection of variables or constants, variables and numbers, and we can join them together, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So what might be good examples of that? Well, maybe I go with something like 2 plus 8. That would be an expression. It's got all constants in it. It's got a plus sign. That, that would work. Maybe I do um, 4n. Because 4n, again, if we don't see any symbol there, we know that that's multiplication, so that's 4 times n. So it's a combination. I've got a constant and a variable together. That would be an expression. Maybe I have ooh, xy because that would be x times y, and those are both variables, and that's okay. That could be an expression. In fact, that is an expression. If I'm feeling extra fancy, maybe I've got, oh, let's go with 10 times mm, x minus, pick a number, pick a number, pick a number. Eh, I'm going to go with 5. There we go. That would be an expression. It's got constants, it's got variables, it's got subtraction, it's got multiplication, it has all of that stuff. So these would be some examples of what you might see when we're talking about an expression. All right, so we've got our words down hopefully here. Again, variable, constant, and expression. What we'd like to work on next is something else having to do with words, because when we pull all these things together, there are words in our English language that mean plus. And so I've made a place here where we can make a list of words that would indicate that we should add. And we have words that tell us that we should be subtracting and multiplying and dividing. So I've left some space here. And with what we're about to do, I'm going to start this list, but we're going to finish this list in class tomorrow. So I'm going to start this list by actually going to the bottom of the sheet where we're talking about translations. And I do want to look at one at a time here. So if we talk about translating, we translate from Spanish into English. That means we take something that's written in one language, we write it in another language. This is the same thing. Right now, it's written in English. I would like to write it in math. And so we see four less than a number. Less than. That's, that's, that's smaller, that's decreasing. What might less than mean? Which operation refers to less than? Ah, that is subtraction. So right here, I'm going to put less than under the subtraction sign. Because if I see the words less than, I know I want to subtract. So we're starting our list of, of, of words here. All right. There is a reason I picked this one first. It's a little bit mean. Less than is tricky. If I say I have less than $10 in my pocket, that means I started out with 10, and it went down from there. So if it's 4 less than a number, it means that I actually started off with that number. Maybe I use an N for number. And then it went down 4 from there. You need to make a huge note to self. Maybe we put a star next to this right here. All right, put a star next to this. If I look at the English version, the 4 comes first and the number comes second. But if I look at the math version, the variable, the number comes first and then the 4 comes second. You do need to pay attention to this. Less than is always backwards, so to speak. Because of the way that that phrase works, if you see less than, you have to switch the order around. So here the 4 was first, here the 4 is last. If you switch this and you do 4 minus n, that's not going to be completely correct. All right, and so that is one of the weird ones. It's one of the few weird ones. So please make sure, gigantic note to self, less than you need to switch your two things around. All right. Next one up for translating purposes. I have three times a number. Hmm, hopefully that's a little bit more obvious. Times. Times is a word that means that we should be multiplying. So I'm going to put times under my list of words that means multiply. Again, we're going to continue adding to that list later, but three times a number, how would I write that? If I know I'm going to multiply, maybe I put three and a dot and a number. We don't know what number, 
that therefore it's going to be a variable, so maybe I put n, three times a number. Or maybe I want to write that differently. Maybe I want to write just 3 and n next to each other. Could that also be correct? Yeah, that's another way to write multiplication, so that would be okay, so maybe I put a comma between these. Or what if I decide to write the 3 and then I use an x for a multiplication sign and then an n? Could I do that? Yes. I do want to caution you to be careful though, because if I write multiplication using an x, it kind of looks like a variable. And right now the only thing saving me is that that x is floating off the ground a little bit. That way I know it's not an x, and it's a multiplication sign instead. So you're probably a little bit safer with these two right here. Okay? Um, let's do one more here. A number increased by 5. Increased by, what does that mean to you? I had 5 guinea pigs. Oops, let's not use 5. I had 2 guinea pigs, and that number increased by 5. That means I have more guinea pigs than I did before, so increased by is a word that means addition, or a phrase that means addition. Increased by. So I'm going to put that in my list of words that means addition, increased by. And so if I have a number increased by 5, I have a number. I don't know what number it is, so I'm going to use a variable. If you're tired of using the letter n, could you use a different letter? Absolutely. Go for it. Increased by, increased by, goes up, we are adding on 5, increased by 5. There's our phrase in English, there's our phrase in math. We have translated it. Two more. This one says the quotient of x and h, the quotient. I brought this one up because this is a word that maybe not a lot of people remember. Quotient is a very, very fancy word that implies division. So we're going to go here and put quotient, Q-U-O-T-I-E-N-T, -E quotient, under division. Now specifically, specifically, quotient is the answer to a division problem. So I want to show the division problem. So how do I show dividing x and 8? Hmm. This one says specifically that x is going to be my, my variable, so I'm going to use x instead of n this time. And quotient divided by, maybe I do this kind of division sign right here. x divided by 8. That would be the quotient of x and 8. Comma, maybe I do something else. Do you have any ideas? What if I did x divided by 8 and I wrote it that way? That's legal, isn't it? So maybe I do that instead. I could use either one. I don't need to use both, but I could use either one. And maybe you have another idea. We'll find out soon. All right, last one. This one is a doozy. Pay attention very carefully. You remember that you are making notes. You want to make extra notes to yourself on this one because this one's got multiple things going on. First of all, we've got times. Times is multiplication, because we did already mention that. But it is also using the word sum. What do you know about sum? Quotient is a fancy word that means the answer to a division problem. Sum is a fancy word that means the answer to an addition problem. So we're going to put that up here. Sum is one of our words that means addition. I want you to focus on the first part of this phrase. Two times. Don't look at the whole thing. What are we multiplying two times? Two times the sum. That right there, that is the root as far as how all of this gets put together for our translation. So two times, how do I write a sum? Well, we said that a sum is an answer to an addition problem. So 2 times, again, if I don't have any symbol here at all, that's times, 2 times the sum. All I need to put in here is my sum. Well, okay, so now I'll go back. What am I adding? The sum of n and 6. n plus 6. 2 times the whole sum. 2 times, in parentheses, n plus 6. Because of the way that's written, if you don't have the parentheses, you actually don't have the correct answer. 
So two times the sum means two times that entire outcome. We are going to get some more practice with this. Again, you should have some notes started. Please make sure that you've got these columns ready to go because we're going to add more things to this. Okie dokie. I'll see you soon. Talk to you later.